In today's video, we will be exploring the beautiful island of Koh Samet, one of the most relaxing and peaceful islands we've been to in Thailand. Luckily for this trip, we didn't have to take any public transportation except for the ferry because we were traveling with our friends. They have a car, so they picked us up at around 7 o'clock in the morning and we got to the pier around 10.30 a.m. So it was a quick trip from Bangkok to the pier. The pier is called Nuan Tip. We chose the fast boat, which was 250 baht for the ticket there and then also the ticket back. The fast boat took legit five minutes. <laughs> it was way faster than we thought it was going to be, so that's really nice. If you do not have a car or you're a tourist here in Thailand, we recommend you use 12go.com to book any tickets that you need, such as vans, buses, ferries, all connections you can do through 12go. When you arrive on Koh Samet, you will have to pay a national park fee, which is 200 baht for each person. And if you are Thai, I believe you get a discount. It was the Queen's birthday, so for Thai citizens, it was free. Once we got our tickets, we were able to walk over to a little shop, get our motorbikes, and unfortunately, motorbikes are a bit more expensive on this island. The owner of the little shop told us that they have to pay a premium for each vehicle on the island because the whole island is a national park. So we did have to pay a little bit more than we typically do. So we paid 400 baht for each day. So we went for a resort called Pandora Resort. It's located in the quieter area of the island, not as touristy and bustling. It's in the, on the northern side and it was like 2,040 baht a night. Big bed, nice big accommodation, two air cons, most important thing. <laughs> and uh, they were fridge, good air cons. Two really nice pools, bar, restaurant, you can eat there, have breakfast there as well if you wanted to. It was very quiet at night, which is very important to us. Check-in wasn't until about 2 p.m. and we got on the island around 11. So we just dropped our bags at our hotel and then we were able to explore the island. Immediately we realized how chilled this island truly is. It is a small island with only a few roads and the roads have many speed bumps so no one drives too fast. And getting around the island is very easy on a scooter or if you don't wanna take a scooter, they do have tons of song towels going all around the island at all times. So no worries about that. There are three 7-Elevens, which is super nice. And there is a ton of little restaurants and cafes, bars, tons of resorts, it's, it's very touristy so you'll know what to expect there. Our first stop is called Ao Pai Beach. We enjoyed the beautiful white sand, the calm waves, and the water was really refreshing. The first day we got there, it felt so nice to just jump in the water. There's a ton of people walking around with little... Baskets with fruit and food and ice cream and yeah. water. So while you're sitting on the beach, they'll walk up to you and offer to sell things. We chilled, relaxed, and we enjoyed how easily we got out of the city so quick and then onto the beach. It was. It was really wonderful. We were on the beach, chilling on the beach in less than five hours from when we left our apartment to there. After chilling for the better part of the day, we packed up and drove south to Lam Tui viewpoint. The drive there felt like a scene out of Jurassic Park. It's so beautiful. Driving around is really just like peaceful. You just see all the greenery and we love that, obviously. If you've seen any of our other videos, we love that. <laughs> The viewpoint is very beautiful and it reminded me a little bit of Hawaii's coast. It has like a rocky edge. I haven't been to Hawaii. <laughs> walking around the viewpoint we went all the way back up north to our resort which only takes 15 minutes we booked in and we just relaxed for a little bit next we headed out for dinner on the beach we went down to Sai Kau beach for dinner I think this is the most popular place to grab dinner because there's tons of restaurants they all have different types of food they have Western food they have Thai food they have I think any type of food you could want on that beach and it was very crowded this was a holiday weekend that we traveled to Koh Samet, so there were a lot of 
foreigners and a lot of Thai people traveling. So definitely be aware if you're gonna come on a weekend that's busy, it is going to get quite busy at night. We found a wonderful restaurant that served some great Thai food and we shared it like one big family with our friends. It was really nice and the sun was setting, it was beautiful. And we had fried rice, we had seafood and a young coconut. It was mixed with some curry and it was so delicious. Had some tempura and onion rings. Mm -hmm. And papaya salad. Oh yeah, some tam, really good. It was a great vibe and we were tired from our travels so we had an early night. So we woke up and seeing that we want to eat some more protein in our meals, it's hard to get enough protein always. We head over to 7-Eleven because they have the really good stuff. <laughs> you buy chicken breast, also a nice chicken burger, more protein. You can buy eggs, cake it, usually get some eggs and rice. Mm -hmm. What else do you get? A smoothie? Yeah, they they have now a little smoothie that you can buy. It's, it's really good. We did want to do a snorkel trip on Sunday, but unfortunately the snorkel trip that we wanted to go on was fully booked. So if you do want to go on a snorkel trip, make sure you book in advance. So instead of going on the snorkel trip, we decided to head out and just explore the island a little bit more. We stumbled upon a nature trail. We read the little sign and it said that it was two kilometers to the other side. So we did it. The first 500 meters was all uphill, like pretty straight uphill. Yeah. There was some ropes that you had to hold on to but it was could. pretty straight uphill. Could hold on to it. You could hold on to it or you can just walk. That's fine too. I didn't touch the rope. <laughs> so on the nature trail, there are nine significant landmarks that had signs describing each milestone. It was super, super sweaty. Yeah. I mean, I was drenched in sweat. I think it was probably a hundred plus degrees Fahrenheit. Once we reached the top, we noticed we were being attacked by mosquitoes. So our top two tips for this trail is bring bug spray and then also to wear closed toes shoes or just running shoes because there are termites all over the ground and the termites will Big termites, yeah. big pincers so they pinched onto my toe <laughs> yeah. and I had to pull it off and actually like I bled a little bit. There are some awesome views on this trail and the trail is relatively maintained. We did notice a few, you know, trees hanging over the edge. <laughs> Not a ton of people walking on this trail. So you might run into a few trees, but you just move them out the way. After you get to the first milestone, then you keep walking a little bit more and then there's a beautiful view of the rest of the island. And then the rest of the time is pretty much downhill and a little bit more airflow, so you're not sweating so much. So the next kilometer and a half is very pleasant. Yeah, it's beautiful. You have beautiful views of the coastline and you get a little bit out of the forest, so you have a really nice perspective. Pro tip, there are some shredded pieces of paper on the ground. And so if you just follow the paper trail, legit follow the paper trail, yeah. you will stay on the trail. I think that's there on purpose. At first we thought it was just litter, but it was throughout the entire trail. So just keep following that. The forest is dense, the trees are beautiful, and the bugs are ferocious. Yeah. <laughs> but overall this hike was an awesome experience and we're so happy we did it. The hike ends on the road. We just circled back, we just kept walking along the road and circled back to our bikes. And that was the end of our hike and it was wonderful. We hopped back on our bike. We saw the water reservoir on Kosamet on the left hand side. So we pulled off and drove around there. We stopped at another viewpoint called Ao Prao Sunset Viewpoint. This is an awesome place to watch sunset. And then we went down to Prao Beach, which is on the opposite side of the island. And you park up on the road and then you walk down to the beach. It's all resorts that are beachfront, super nice resorts, and a really, really nice beach to just chill, quite, relax. It's quite a peaceful and not as touristy. Mm -hmm. More like family resorts and like high end, really nice. Yeah, so we found a tree to just chill under, brought our own little towels and just hung out under there. It was very nice. Of course, we started to get hungry, so we went to the small market on Koh Samet. I think it's the only market that they really have, like quote unquote market that they have on Koh Samet. It's just a bunch of little food stalls right next to each other. We got some lovely Thai food, and I actually this time tried some Isan food that is called Sop No Mai. I think that's how you say it. I could be saying it wrong. And it means bamboo shoots, so I tried some bamboo. When I first tried it, the first taste was kind of weird, 
But then after I kept eating it, I was like, wow, this is really, really good. So I think that's one of my new favorite dishes. I didn't like it that much. I'm not a panda. It was delicious. Mm. After lunch, we went back to the hotel to refresh and relax. We went out a bit later on Sunday night because we knew we wanted to stay out to watch the fire show. We had heard that Koh Samet had one of the best fire shows in all of Thailand, so we made a mission to go and see the best one. And we grabbed a few drinks during happy hour, and at 8.30 p.m., a restaurant called Ploi Tale, it's just one of the restaurants on the beach, and at 8.30, they start the fire show. So they start kind of like in the restaurant, like out in front of the restaurant, and then they walk down past all the people and then they end up on the water. So These it's little a really- These little race platforms. We got some sweet footage. Yeah, it's it was a really, really cool show. And it was, it was lit, yo. Lit, yes. lit on fire. It was a really cool show. It was very entertaining. My favorite part of the fire show was when they take out those steel wool balls, soak them in paraffin, light them and start flinging sparks. We just stayed for the first one and then we left the beach and we grabbed a 7-Eleven dinner. So after our fire show night, we woke up the next morning. We just checked out of our hotel, went to breakfast right in front of the pier, returned the scooters. We left Koh Samet at 11 and we're back on the mainland at legit 11.05. It's very convenient and we just got back in the car and drove back to Bangkok. Only took us about two and a half hours. Koh Samet is a really quick trip from Bangkok. So if you are looking for a getaway from the big city, we definitely recommend Koh Samet. It's a nice getaway, quick, fast, easy, and peaceful. All right, you guys, there you have it. Our journey to Koh Samet, a beautiful, relaxing getaway from Bangkok. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you wanna see some more Thailand, Southeast Asia content, make sure you subscribe. And leave a comment. Comment. We'll reply. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Jeez, always recording.